what Mahatma Gandhi said. Knowing the power in this world. He was the first member of the Akorino Church to move into the United States and openly declare that he wouldn't compromise his faith for anything. That was a Hindu who had a glimpse of what the gospel is and the power they are love. He said, if we Christians could live like Jesus wants us to live, if we could internalize this power, the whole world would be Christian in two weeks. The most conspicuous part of his attire is his kilemba, so a Swahili word for a turban. And even though many heads turn whenever he appears in almost any setting, the man says he is least bothered by people's perception. <laughs> On this day, Dr. Waigu and his wife were preaching at the Kenyan American Community Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And although sometimes his messages have been described as controversial, many who have been listening to him across the United States say that his preaching is spiritually enriching. I had the opportunity of interviewing a man who proudly and gladly introduces himself as a Mokorino. They know you are some sort of a pastor, that's what they say. <laughs> Referring to him as a pace setter is an understatement. He's a preacher, a parent, a teacher, matter of fact, a professor, and not just a professor, but the chair of the Department of Religion and Philosophy at Wiley University in Texas. I'm welcoming Reverend Dr. Solomon Waigua. Dr. Waigua, let's start by you telling us where you began, all the way from Gatirima village in Nyahururu, and now in the United States, not just as a visitor or somebody who just lives here, but somebody who is already very, very well respected within the, uh, the community here. Who is Reverend Dr. Solomon Waigua, even though I did mention a few things about yourself. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I am a, a, a pastor from the Akuruno Church, mm. I, I, and um, I was born and raised in Nyeri District, uh, like I said. Went to high school in um, Nyahururu, a place called Daragua Secondary School, um, and then went to college to, to, to train as a teacher uh, in Kigali, teacher, teacher's training college. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, after which I taught for 10 years uh, in various uh, schools uh, in Kenya. Uh, after which uh, I, 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 I stopped teaching and went into uh, the ministry. I went to train as a pastor at uh, St. Paul's uh, College, uh, St. Paul's University, uh, which was then St. Paul's United Theological College. And uh, so I did three years for my bachelor's. And, and while there, I, I, I felt that uh, I have a quest within me for, for, for higher study in theology. And so uh, I knew at the back of my mind that I was called to, to study theology uh, at higher levels. And so when I got out of uh, uh, St. Paul's, I, I went uh, to pastor, and I pastored for three years uh, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, at the Nairobi uh, Huruma Akorino Church yes. uh, in Nairobi, uh, it's a cathedral now uh, at Huruma. Yes, over there by Huruma grounds, and, and uh, you know there, <coughs> and and, uh, and then from there I, I I was I got a World Council of Churches scholarship uh, to come to this country, uh, the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, to study theology. Um, incidentally, it was it was a one year scholarship that, that they gave me. And uh, it wasn't supposed to be uh, uh, a degree. It was just attendance. That's what they had paid for me. And so when I got here and I, and I found that really I was not uh, uh, in a program that was leading to a degree, mm -hmm. I told them I need to go back home uh, because I cannot come all this way and not, and not do a graduate degree. Yeah. Uh, and so um, they just allowed me to, to do the degree work uh, within one year. Which college was that? This was uh, Austin Seminary in Austin, Texas. Okay. Uh, they, they, so they allowed me, and I and I did, and I and I started the MA. And I had to finish it in one year. That's not what they said, but 
that's just the conditions. Yes. Because that's what has been paid for uh, by the scholarship. And, and so, uh, by the grace of God, I was able to work very hard and, uh, and finish the, the master's uh, degree uh, within one year. I nearly killed myself. I would not recommend anybody to, to do that yes. uh, if you can do it some other way. But uh, when you are locked in a situation, there is always a way yeah. to, to make it better. I could not think of going back to Kenya uh, without a... Without a, a, a so, so how long ago was that? That was in 1996, 1997. Okay. So I graduated with my MA in 1997. Uh -huh. And now the school itself decided to give me another scholarship after seeing that, well, this young man did graduate uh, uh, in, with his master's in one year. Yes. It's, it's a two-year degree. Yes. And so they, they called me back to do a, a three-year program, which is called Master of Divinity, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I, uh, which I did in two years again. So I saved another year there. Um, so you know, I, I saved two years. You know, the, 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 the two degrees ought to take five years. Yes. Uh, but, but I was able to f do it one year and then, and then two years, which is three years instead of five. Right. Um, and uh, then after that, uh, I, I was now looking for a place to do my doctorate. My doctorate. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there is an exam here called um, graduate record exam, which I had not done. So uh, I, I found myself in Emory University. Em Emory University uh, accepted me at that time to come and do a, a master's degree. That's here in Atlanta. Right? Here in Atlanta. Yes. So I did another, a third master's degree. I mean, people ask me, why did you have to do all these master's degrees? It's, it's, it's because you, you're going where, where, the, where opportunity is open. Right. And uh, so I, I found myself in Atlanta now. Uh, doing a third master's degree in theology. By this time, I had all the theology in my brain now. I was get, getting saturated with it. Yes. Uh, but I finished the, the Master of Divinity out of uh, Emory, Master of Theology mm. out of uh, Emory University. And at that time, I did the GRE, graduate record exam, and passed uh, well enough to be admitted to a, a doctoral program. Yes. And so uh, I applied to Baylor University, which is in Waco, Texas, mm -hmm. uh, and they accepted me there. And uh, so I went there and, uh, uh, and I started my PhD, uh, which I finished in 2006. So now you're doing all this and um, your, your family, your wife. My, yes. 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 Uh, you see, when, when I did my first master's, mm -hmm. Uh, and they gave me another scholarship to do now my second master's in, in Austin Seminary. Mm -hmm. That's when I went home and got my family, brought my family over. Okay. Okay. I also had to go change my visa because the visa I had was not student earlier. It was a J-1 visa. Right. So I changed over now to student visa. And, and so I came back with my, with my family. My kids were very little. Yes. And uh, one thing I, I did, and I thank God for it, is when we were uh, uh, a young family, uh, I, I taught my English, my, 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 my children how to speak in English. Yes. Um, and uh, even in Yahuru, as little kids, they, they, they spoke in, in English. Right. Uh, because I did that because I was a, a school teacher. Mm -hmm. And I saw how children who did not understand English, they would have trouble yes. with biology, with math, with all that. Uh, and I said, mine, I'll make sure that English will not be a problem. They will read, they will write, they will speak it. Yes. And, uh, you know, God was preparing my family for, for coming here. All right. So when we came here, even the little, little one who came mm. to start nursery school here, yes. she, was, she was conversant in, in English because they, sp they spoke to me in English. Yes. So I told them, now, you spoke to daddy in English in Nairobi, because the community was not speaking in English. Right. Now, right. you are going to speak to me in, in Swahili yes. and, and Kikuyu. Mm -hmm. And that is how, to this day, my, 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 my kids uh, will, will speak Kikuyu. They will speak good Swahili. Uh, and they have gone through uh, American education all the way to the doctorate. Now, let's talk about your walk of faith. How has it been? Have you faced challenges, especially considering that... Uh, you are in a country that is not uh, a place where you were born uh, and obviously people who come in here face challenges 
uh, tell us about yourself, your work of faith, and especially in regard to the fact that you're here in the United States. You know, uh, uh, be, uh, growing as a Mokurino, a kid, yeah. I, I had I had grown with that. People will always um, uh, look at you like you're you're you're, you're lesser. Yes. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, and even using diminutive language, you right. know, people, especially Kikuyu people, are very good with diminutive language. Yes. Uh, when you see, and, and I will explain to you, right. when, when you see people call instead of instead of saying Mokorino, they say Gorino. Yeah, that's not in Kikuyu. Yeah. That is, they have already dehumanized that person. Right. Because if he was a human being in Swahili and Kikuyu, it's Mo, Mtu, Mo. Yeah. That is, we are attesting to the fact that this is a human being I'm addressing. Right. Uh, so we say Mwalimu, we say because he's a human being, you know, uh, Modigari, we put that Mo because he's a person. Right. But when we want to dehumanize that person, mm -hmm. we remove the Mo and we put either K-I or, or something that is uh, objective. Objective. And we objectify that person and yeah. so Gorino, Mekorino and all that. So, so that, that doesn't worry you. Yeah. That, that is something I had grown up with even as a kid. Yes. Uh, it didn't bother me at all. Yeah. Uh, uh, w what bothers you is uh, when you come here is the lack of the support. Yeah. That, uh, that that uh, that you and this is not just a Mukurino, it's, it's everybody else. Right. You really have to have uh, a, a lot of faith and and remember the tradition that you come from. Yes. Uh, for me, it is it was reminding my family mm. what a glorious tradition we come from yes. called the Akurino Church, and that's how I, I, we won the battle of. Yes keeping our children Akurino yes. and in the faith. Yes. It's to to emphasize, hey, we're from Kenya. Yeah. We're Kenyans. And in Kenya, there are so many great traditions, you know, from various churches. Yes. There are Catholics, there are Presbyterians, there are Baptists, mm -hmm. and then there are Akurino. We happen to be Akurino. And this is how we live. Yeah. And, 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 and causing them, the children, mm -hmm. to own that. And when they own it, I'm telling you, they, they, they just, they, they, they don't change because they feel that they can stand for something. Now, speaking of traditions, you are aware that there have been people who have even been so derogatory in the way they have described the Akorino sect. I'm interested in knowing, do you think whether the Akorino traditions are changing with the times, just like everything else? Yeah, yeah and, and I was, my answer to that is uh, uh, change. Yes. Change happens to all of us. It's like the wind blowing. Uh, uh, through through time, and, and it changes people on the way, mm -hmm. uh, and the Akurino Church is no exception. Yeah, uh, and so w with time, there are things that are that are modified, and and uh, if you call that change, I call it I call it growth, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and growth is change. Yeah. Uh, so we we have seen uh, a growth and. and for the better, yeah. not for the worse. It's yes. not removing uh, anything from our tradition, but it is it is growing it uh, uh, farther. Right. So, for example, uh, I, I and others were the first according to pastors to go to seminary yes. to train as pastors along with pastors from other churches. You yes. know, some of my classmates uh, included the, the the current um, presby uh, presbyter. Yeah. Uh, a moderator of the Presbyterian Church, right. my friend, right. um, and, and, and others, he, even the the, uh, uh, the leader of the Anglican Church. Right. These these were my, you know, college mates right. that I know personally. Right. So so that is a change. Yes, yes that's course. a change, but it is a change for the better. Yeah, it's a change for the good, and it, it's called growth, and I, and, I, and I appreciate it. And and th there will be other changes too because yeah. our country is growing. Yeah. And the Akurino Church is not going to be left behind. And while we are still at it, what are your thoughts about modernizing the Akurino music, the Akurino songs? I have in mind a song like Kigosho Ya Yesu. I'm sure you are aware that it has taken the music scene, the gospel music scene by storm, if you like. Um, this song, of course, by uh, Aaron Allen. What uh, do you think about being able to modernize these songs, especially uh, because I know some of your people are conservative enough to to say this is not the right way to do things. What do you think of, of this particular uh, phenomenon? Yes, y yes, yes. Uh, uh, it, that's that's a blessing too. Right, that's a blessing. You see, 
Akurino beats al Akurino beats al African tunes right. uh, and melodies. Yeah. These are African tunes and melodies, yeah. and uh, Akurino songs come with that uh, with that raw African anointing. That when it is sung, mm -hmm. whether it is sung in Luya or Luo, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, everybody that is African. If you have any, any Africanness in you, right. it doesn't matter whether you're from Nigeria. Yeah. It, it 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 touches your soul. Right. Because you are African yes. by essence, yes. and so for them to reach out to, to grow, so what Al Nanma has done mm. is to is to not you know more it's it's to get other traditions, and that's how growth happens. Yes, you know because you will find that uh, in Akurino music, it has yeah. been. You know, influenced also by the Maragoli people. Mm. It has been influenced by the Luo people from those those Akurino traditions in those in those in those areas. Yes. So you will find some you know that uh, mm. that fast tempo of yes. the Luyas, for example. Yeah. Well, one may argue that you probably support this because you are well exposed. You are well traveled, having uh, lived here in the United States and probably traveled to other. Western countries where the societies are, are more welcoming, so to speak. And this makes me wonder whether somebody like uh, Aaron Allen and other musicians who may be doing music like him or who may be wanting to do uh, that kind of music would be chastised if they went uh, to places where there's you know, the people are very conservative. I'm talking about the Akorino sect leaders who may be more conservative than yourself. Perhaps there are those who would think like that. Uh, but that would be problematic because uh, and they would be ignoring something very important. That although Akorino music starts off uh, with uh, Kikuyu beats, mm -hmm. it very quickly moves to Meru, historically. Yeah. And we've written about that. It goes to, and other scholars have written about that, uh, because of the persecution when the Akurinos were hunted like criminals mm -hmm. in central province, they had to migrate to eastern province. Yeah. And so you have uh, Meru traditions coming into. So this intercultural borrowing mm -hmm. uh, uh, is something of a blessing. And what Aaron and others are doing is to reach beyond the Meru and beyond the Ruya who have already, uh, uh, you know, uh, influenced the Akurino in their music, in, yes. their, in the makeup of Kigosho, right. uh, 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 to, to go to Ringara, yes. to experiment. Yes. And that's what we, uh, we call vision. I wonder what would happen if I took these Akurino beats and I kind of harnessed them with uh, Jamaican legi. Let me see how it will be. And they, he gives us something very beautiful yes. uh, 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 in a Corino Ringara kind of mix, you know, a Corino and Legi. Right. And then now we, we have Ringala. And I'm excited about it. I don't know what he will give us next. So you're saying the transformation, the change sweeping throughout the societies in the world, uh, that the church should not be an exception, right? Let me tell you why I think this is very positive. Mm. As a bona fide Mocorino, mm -hmm. I, I have prayed. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my personal prayer. Right. I am very concerned that the Akurino Church in the year 2000, in the years 2000, yeah. uh, continues to be quote unquote tribal. Yes. In that you could almost say that uh, when you see a Mokurino, you might be 99% correct if you say he's Kikuyu. Right. You know, you may be wrong because we, we also have some Maasais, Maasais and others. Yeah. But I want to say this, though they are a very negligible minority. I have prayed. Mm -hmm that uh, God will bring a wind of change mm -hmm. during my, you know, d during my lifetime, yes. where this movement mm -hmm. of the Akurino will cease to be Kikuyu, that it will move on to, to other areas. Right. Maybe that move may not need to be other people's becoming Akurino, right. but other people, you know, beginning to be enriched by the resource we have here. Right. So what Aaron and others are doing is to give Kenya, you know, music j grown in the Akurino Church, mm -hmm. but uh, but uh, 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 given the flavor from other traditions, yes. you know, seasoned yeah. by other traditions, and they cook it in the African part, so yeah. to say, yeah. and then diversify it to the people. And when it reaches to the Luya and the Luo and the people in Congo, they're like, wow, this is this is good. Yeah, yeah.
many will get to know about you and how well you are educated uh, may consider you elitist in, in a good way now what would you say uh, would be your message to other members of the Corino sect who may who may not have excelled as well as you you have managed to especially the Corinos who are down there in the village who and just the same old Corinos that we knew who were fairly conservative. And I, and I, and I tell you, conservatism, mm -hmm. conservatism has, has a positive effect, uh, as well as a negative effect. I, I'd like to deal with the, with the, with the positive. Uh, the positive is this, that they conserve something good. Uh, I'm, 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 and I'm, thank you for using that word, conservatism, mm -hmm. because uh, we look at it as negative. You know, just like the West here, yeah. uh, 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 the words like we label things fundamentalist. If you are following the Bible for what it is, you're fundamentalist. Yes. I mean, if you are calling me fundamentalist for sticking to the word of God, then go ahead. I will say, yes, I'm a fundamentalist. Yes. If being, if, if saying for God so loved the world and applying that to me, if saying when the Bible says that I'm a winner, I own that text and I begin to apply it in my life. If that is extremism, well, so be it. Uh, so, so that conservatism is a is a positive thing. There are some values, and we are beginning to rediscover those values mm -hmm. that uh, that have been conserved by our fathers. Those kabuti wearing yes. people. Yeah. You know, if, if you just ignore the kabuti, some of them will not greet you. If you just ignore that and begin to sit at their feet, I can tell you this, mm -hmm. that even with a degree, mm -hmm. when I went back to those people, even today, mm -hmm. when I go to those people yeah. and I sit in the councils, I just marvel at the Because now I can hear them and I'm hearing them uh, with a mind that has also met Plato and Aristotle and Socrates. Right. And when I listen to, for example, my Bishop Ezekiel Karanja mm -hmm. uh, in Nakuru, mm -hmm. this is a man who doesn't have a sixth grade education. Yes. And he says something that I, I see is very close to what Socrates said. Yes. Guess what I do? Mm -hmm. I go, wow. You know? You strike me as someone who has very strong opinions, especially on matters religion. Would you encourage your children to follow your path? Yes, I do. Yes, yes I do. And every parent should. Yes. Because you are Catholic, you are Anglican, you are what you are because, because you felt it's good. And you have a responsibility to raise your children right. uh, as such. Yes. Um, but... Um, but would I be offended if, if for example, they, they, they had moved to, to another church? Well, of course, when they were children, mm -hmm. I had a responsibility to train. The Bible says, train your, train your children up. Train yes. up a child yes. in the way he should go. Right. So you train that child in the way that you already know. Right. The way that I knew was the scriptural way. Right. And by the way, mm -hmm. uh, we don't uh, emphasize those denominational things. The no. first and foremost is, uh, is the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. I would be very concerned if, if, if they became anything else. Uh, I, would have, I would consider myself having lost, uh, uh, lost the, 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 the task. Right. Not lost to the person, but, but you know, I, I would not be very happy yes. if he left, they left my religion, the right. Christian faith. Right. But going to the Anglican church, going to be Presbyterian, I, I have a sister who is Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, she is, I think, uh, uh, Pentecostal or some other church. And she's, she's my sister. Um, uh, I would be very concerned if they left the Lord, if, yeah. they, if they quit believing in Jesus. I would be very, very concerned. Uh, but I would, I'm even happier. Yeah. One of my happiest, one of my, uh, uh, my, my, my verse that I like when I'm thinking about children mm -hmm. is uh, John, uh, uh, the, the, the letter of John. Uh, uh, the third letter of John, yes. uh, verse 4, mm -hmm. uh, it says, uh, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in the faith. When you have children who are walking in your faith, whatever it is, yes. that's a joy. Yeah. And that's a joy. And uh, uh, so when they are ministers with you, when, yeah. when, and, then, mm -hmm. and then they follow that. Yes. And not only that, because of that, mm -hmm. They also excel in other things. Yeah. Okay. They excel in school. They excel in their in their personal growth. So your children also put on 
turbans as well? Uh, yes, sir. They uh, do. Uh, fortunately, they do. How many? Uh, how many are they again? I, I, we have, we have three children. Three children. Uh, we have a son. Uh, my son is a doctor, uh, David Wachira. Yeah. Uh, David Wachira. Uh, uh, graduated uh, with his PhD at, uh, uh, at the age of 29, 29 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I have a girl mm -hmm. who is uh, also a PhD candidate right now. Uh -huh. uh, she should be graduate, getting out in uh, next year, 2015. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. David has a bachelor, uh, no, no, uh, uh, he's a, a, his PhD is in public health. Yes. You know, he's the youngest Kenyan to be uh, employed by the World Bank. Oh, wow. Uh, there's a prestigious program called YP, Young Professionals. You know, and uh, so he got into that one uh, with World Bank. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Elizabeth is eyeing um, the World Health Organization, hoping to also uh, uh, get a job there as a, as a, as a public uh, health uh, person. It, yes. That, that's, what she, that's, what, that's her niche, uh, public health. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, that's Elizabeth. Uh, and she is also a preacher. A very fiery Pentecostal preacher, that girl. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm a Corino. Yes. Raised in the U.S. Uh huh. Speaking Kikuyu and Swahili and singing a Corino songs. <laughs> the first female, mm -hmm. female Mokorino to teach in a public university in the U.S. is that little girl. Now let's get a little personal here. How do students at Tawile University in Texas, where you teach? react to your attire. That's I think Americans time. have a lot of respect for, respect. for anybody. Yes. Uh, this is the place where, where no people don't just care. Uh, you know, oh, he has a turban, but, you know, it's no big deal. No. I mean, uh, people in my department, they, they never, nobody will ask you. Right. Uh, they know you're a Christian. They know you are some sort of a pastor. That's what they say. <laughs> Why does he wear a turban? He's some sort of a <laughs> pastor. pastor, some priest of some kind. Yes. And, and they leave it at that. Yeah. They, they, and they're very respectful. Uh -huh. They're very respectful. Until right. you disrespect yourself. Yes. They're very, very respectful. And, and I don't think that there, actually, mm -hmm. anybody come, any Mokorino coming here mm -hmm. would not leave the church because of the society. No, it's because of they themselves chose to do that, right. and you don't have to 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 even come here to do that. It yes. is happening in Nairobi, you know. Yes. So, so I think what keeps us going in any church, in any tradition, right, it is we have something to stand for. Just for the sake of those who may not be conversant or who may not be familiar with the Akorino way of life, what is Akorinoism? I think what I, what I'd like to 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 say uh, if yeah, so, so that people understand why yeah. you have to uphold. Yes, what you I, do I think, and, and, and so with a, with a yeah. lot of passion. I do think that as a people, God mm -hmm. calls us to to stand for something. Yes, and when you you cannot succeed in life if mm -hmm. if you do not stand for something, you have to have a, a vision. Yes. First of all, I always say, understand your personal mission. Every human being has a mission. Why am I here? Yeah. Why did I come to this world? You know, knowing the purpose as to why you are here. Because you see, God, when God created us, mm -hmm. he, creates, uh, he created us for a purpose. And therefore, I say that uh, the, the, the purpose, the, the greatest purpose in your life mm -hmm. is to understand your purpose in life. Right. So once you have understood that purpose, yes. then it becomes your mission. This is my mission. This is what I, I, I'm called to do. Yes. Once you have identified a mission, I think, and this is what I teach my own children, mm -hmm. is, is you see now, now you know, you know your vision, uh, your mission is, I, I feel that I want to be, to be a doctor and, and heal people, or a preacher like me, and you know, or a professor, that, that's a mission, yeah. you know, to, that's what you'll be doing for, for God. Yeah. But if you do not have a vision, then the devil is just going to mess with you. You need to have a vision, because if you don't have a mission, mm -hmm. you are just a, you have a mission without a vision. Yeah. Then the devil will give you a, a, a vision real quick, and he will that vision will read you away yes. from your mission. Yeah. So here's what I say: uh, uh, stand for something, live for it, and work towards it. Because if you have a vision in your life, it will get you up in the morning. Yeah. Now allow me to ask you why you chose a Corino and not any other denomination. My father was a Mukurino. Okay. And and uh, and then, but you see, once once we are born into it, yes, 
uh, then it it comes a time during our journey mm -hmm. that we we evaluate yes and and people who do not examine that yeah. and say hey it, what is the what's it you you look at it and you say you know what yeah I think I, I, I want to stay in my Anglican church or yeah. I want to stay well, that personal because decision that's so as you grow old I believe you begin to understand and appreciate the values inculcated or propagated by this same church right and you begin to compare this and that and yes. then you decide you know what I'm a, that is very very important I call it I call it personalization when oh. you when you personally own it yeah. okay yes. and where that does not happen yeah this person remains wishy-washy. They right. don't even know what they stand for. Right. Uh, uh, you know, that's what Socrates said. Socrates mm -hmm. said that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the unexamined life is not worth living. Right. So, so you have to evaluate yourself and, and see whether, you know, even the Bible says, you know, check yourself, examine yourself, and see whether you are in Christ. So, so you do that. And when I did that, man, when I looked at the traditions in the Apollonian Church, I said, ha ha. You said, this is where you belong. This belong. is where I belong. <laughs> you know, I was attracted by the, by the sense, but by, by their interpretation of purity. Right. That would keep me away from from all those things that people are, are 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 not sure that they can get away from yes you know so the way we were raised you know we were scared of sin right you know uh, um and uh and and i love that and i, I wanted to own that mm -hmm. and th that's what to this day has endeared me uh and then of course the quality of the messages right and the things that God has given us, not just for us, but for all Kenya. For example, you you familiar with the 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 um, the, the, the music, the yes. songs, yes. all right? Yes. Um, they are no longer just Akorino. They are everybody's. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a blessing that is for Kenyans, and because I come from where they start, the begin the source of the genesis of them. Yes. I'm proud of that. That's something I ought to be mm. pr proud of. You told me earlier that you do not believe that being an Akorino or belonging to any church for that matter does not give you a pass, a moral authority to judge others. Other exactly. So, so thou shalt not judge, right? Exactly. Whether you are Akorino or... Yeah. So long a, a, as and you, you will not be judged. You will not be judged. Yes. Now, as we conclude, I kindly ask you to look into that camera and speak directly to our viewers and offer them any piece of advice that you may have. Anything you may want to tell them. What I want to say is, yeah. is, is, is that we are losing a lot of young people. Look right into that. Looking camera. into you now. Yes. Uh, we are losing a lot of young people because we're not training them to be mission minded. And we need to train our children. We need to train our children to understand their purpose in life and train them how to have a vision so that that dream, that vision, will get them up in the morning and they will go to school. That vision will not allow them to sleep with their homework undone. That vision will get them to walk in the snow, even to catch a bus, you know, when it's raining and go to school because they have something. When there is a course, when there is a course, this person will do, will do something. Like we, like we say in our house, it's either the schoolhouse or the ER. And then on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, because we are a worshiping community, uh, we wake up and go to church. Amen. And so that's, that's what I would say. When people have a mission and then, and then a vision, they are self-driven and they do wonders. Amen. Thank you so much. I have been speaking to the Reverend Dr. Solomon Waigua, the Chair of the Department of Religion and Philosophy at Wiley University in Texas in the United States of America. I want to thank all our viewers from wherever you tuned in. From Atlanta, I am BMJ Muridi.